Intelligence is the core feature that made human species the dominant force on Earth. It entails a variety of mental capabilities such as reasoning, planning, problem solving, and learning from their own and somebody other's experience. Since 1940s, humanity developed a special interest in researching and expanding the field of artificial intelligence. One of the products of artificial intelligence are agents that to some extent are able to solve similar tasks that humans do. Although intelligent agents lack the so-called natural intelligence that us humans do have, they still do have the possibility to perform and even learn to perform new tasks. Few interpretations have been proposed as to what artificial intelligence actually is and what sort of tasks should an agent be able to perform in order to be considered intelligent. Passing the Turing test, driving autonomous cars, or even winning human player in different kind of contests might indicate that the agent has some sort of intelligence. But there is yet to be one standard definition to what an uh, intelligent system is. In this video, we'll try to give you our own interpretation and definition to what an intelligent system is. We'll do that by comparing the achievements of two intelligent systems in games such as chess and Dota 2. We'll try to show and convince you that intelligence is something relative to time. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Chess has always been considered an intelligent game. The game has three main stages. The opening, where each player develops its piece. Middle games, where players maneuver with their pieces and try to start an attack against the opponent's king. And the end game. In the 15th century, it gained a lot of popularity, especially in European courts, thus being named the royal game. At the dawn of artificial intelligence, many chess players looked with skepticism towards computer chess engines, and they had serious grounds to do so. The first AI agent that played chess used mostly a greedy approach. This is a game played between Soviet Grandmaster David Bronstein and the Soviet computer M20. From the beginning, the Grandmaster played the risky opening, which is called King's Gambit. Being offered a free pawn, the machine happily accepted it. While Bronstein was developing his pieces and preparing a mating net for the Black King, M20 was cheerfully capturing pawns. This was perhaps the movement when M20 could have saved the game by preparing some defenses for his king. However, it went on being greedy and captured White's rook. With its king on the center of the board, M20 got quickly crushed and checkmated. During the 1990s, the computers became more powerful, so did the algorithms running on them. Since 1985, IMB has been working on Deep Blue, which was a supercomputer by then definition, which was a deemed a suitable chess opponent for Garry Kasparov, who is considered by many grandmasters the best chess player ever. Deep Blue was based on a brute force, it could calculate around 200 million chess positions per second. Many were shocked when Deep Blue defeated Kasparov in 1996 on their first game and won their second match in 1997. Nowadays, chess engines like Stockfish, Lila or Fritz could win any grandmaster even if they are run from a smartphone. Today's elite chess relies heavily on computer engines. Usually the first 10-15 moves follow a computer line after which the quality of moves sharply declines when the human brain takes over. Driven by the everlasting desire to improve upon what has been done so far and to make a safe AI that's going to help humanity, OpenAI, an American company, started working on its latest machine learning project, namely OpenAI 5, which tries to defeat human players in the game of Dota 2 and, through that, pioneer the AI gaming world and apply the expertise gained to other fields, such as robotic hand control. The first bots from OpenAI 5 were born in 2016 and show the world what they're capable of a year after in 2017 at a Dota 2 tournament, defeating a professional human player in a 1 vs 1 match. In 2018 they were able to defeat amateur players in 5 vs 5 scenarios and lost 2 matches against professional human teams. Not giving up, the bots made their so far final appearance in 2019, fighting against the past year champions, winning the best of three series, and proving that self-play reinforcement learning can achieve superhuman performance on a difficult task. So why did they choose Dota? 
AI is here to solve real-world issues, and games, especially nowadays, have the ability to simulate the world's complexity and continuity. Dota 2, besides being one of those games, is also extremely popular, with a $35 million prize pool for tournaments and up to a million concurrent players. From an AI perspective, it's quite the challenge too, because Dota has long time horizons, the games run at 30 frames per second for 45 minutes, resulting in around 20,000 steps per episode, where for example chess games have around 80 moves. Dota 2 has also a partially observed state, which means that players only see a portion of the map, the rest of it being hidden. And last but not least, the game has high dimensionality. A large map, 10 heroes fighting at the same time, many buildings, many non-player units and lots of game features like trees, runes, words, requiring the model to choose from 8,000 to 80,000 actions, more than the 35 actions needed for a chess play. OpenAI 5 played the game with two limitations to decrease the complexity. They could choose only 17 from the 117 heroes available for a game, and they did not support items allowing players to temporarily control multiple units at the same time. So how does OpenAI 5 do it? How they achieve this level of gameplay considering the complexity of the game? The bots learn from self-play only. So 80% of the games are done against themselves, and 20% of those games are done against their past selves. They are also trained to maximize the sum of future rewards. The objective is to simulate a common professional strategy by focusing on long-term rewards, such as map control, instead of short-term ones, for example, gold farming. Exploration is achieved by firstly walking aimlessly around the map, and after several hours of training, other game concepts emerge. After several days, the bots adopt human strategies and with further training they can replicate high-level strategy. To coordinate the bots, a hyperparameter called Team Spirit is used, which is a weight from 0 to 1 and tells the bots how much they should care about their individual rewards versus the team rewards. So, what are the results of all these techniques applied? How does OpenAI 5 perform? To achieve a 99% win rate, the current version of OpenAI 5 has consumed 800 petaflops and experienced about 45,000 years of Dota gaming over 10 real-time months, with an average of 250 years of experience per day. When it comes to the main metric of human performance, the reaction time, it achieves 215 milliseconds versus the 250 milliseconds it takes a person to visually react to the game. So how can OpenAI 5 compare to chess? And generally, how can Dota compare to chess? When it comes to actions per minute, an AI has to tackle around 200 actions for a Dota game versus the average of one action in chess. Chess is a game of perfect information where in Dota it's very limited and the main goal in chess is to search for the best move, while in Dota a model needs to be trained to think what the opponent might be doing and then search for the best answer to their hypothetical action and all of that needs to be done 200 times a second. But the question is, will something as advanced as OpenAI 5 be considered trivial in the long future, when Dota and its mechanics will be as common for future people as chess mechanics are for us now? We think that the answer is yes. After many discussions and research, we came up with our own definition on what an intelligent system is. We decided to look at the system's intelligence from a quantum point of view, and here is our answer on what it means to be an intelligent system. But before, a little bit of background. A qubit is always in a superposition between two states, and that means that it has the chance of being either state A or state B. And after the qubit is measured, it collapses to one of those states with a specific probability. But after the qubit was measured once, it doesn't matter how many times you measure it again, it will still have the same state. Similar to a qubit, a system is in a superposition between two states, intelligence and non-intelligence, or how we call it, dumb dumbness. In this scenario, a measurement is the sole action of questioning a system's intelligence, and that is completely based on the timestamp the measurement was done. If somebody will ask himself nowadays if a chess AI is something intelligent, most probably he will come to the conclusion that it is not. However, if the same question would have been asked hundreds of years ago, the answer most probably would have been yes. 
So intelligence is a quantum state of a system which can be measured by questioning this system's intelligence and it is based on the timestamp the measurement was done. So yeah, that was our take on intelligence system. Thank you for watching. Bye.